Good evening, YouTubers. Dave here from Funky Sloth Comic and Collectibles, and today is April 2nd, 2021, and it's a Friday, so that means it's going to be my uh, top 16 video. And today's top 16 video will be my top 16 Western TV shows of all time. Um, I hope everybody is staying safe and doing well. Like I always do, quick little uh, weather video, for weather update for today for Ludlow, Vermont. <sighs> hasn't been nice as it has been. It's only going to get be got up to like 32 today. Windy, damp. It poured yesterday. But it's supposed to start warming up. I mean, this is spring in Vermont. One day it'll be 60. The next day it'll be 25, 30 with snow. The next day it'll be 55 with rain. And that's spring in Vermont. Um, just a couple quick little things. Like the, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Um, hit the notification bell, share it. I need the need the uh, shares, I need the views, I need the likes. Uh, like I said, I I like doing this stuff, but I'm just not getting the the likes and shares that I wish I was getting. But I'm not going to stop doing it. I enjoy doing this. So with that being said, uh, tonight. Again, is the top 16 Westerns TV shows. Sunday be my uh, movie TV talk. And I posted a quick video yesterday on my first initial reaction of Godzilla vs. Kong. But on Sunday will be a full spoiler discussion on the movie with a uh, special guest, my son. He'll be here. Um, and we'll be talking about Falcon, Winter Soldier, and a couple other items. But uh, the big one will be the Kong, uh, the Godzilla vs. Kong reaction. So with that being said, let's get right into today's video. Again, today's video, top 16 Western TV shows of all time. So, as always, I, when I do my top 16, I start off with an honorable mention. Today's honorable mentions go first will be to uh, The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr., which shared from 1993 to 1994. Uh, that was Bruce Campbell. Um, who's known for Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness. Um, this show is a Western, but it's also uh, sci-fi mixed with some modern steampunk aspects into it. Had some uh, good stories. And Bruce Campbell's awesome. Come on, he's awesome. Love Army of the Dead. Evil Dead's good, but Army of the Dead is the best one. I mean, Ar Army of the Darkness, sorry. All right, let's get right into it then. Number 16. People are going to think this should have been higher on the list, but to me it's not. <laughs> which is Rawhide, which aired from 1959 to 1965. And this is one of the first Western TV shows that I really started watching on the reruns. Um, and who knew that Clint Eastwood would become what, who, what he became in movie history. But it, it, it was it's in my top 16. Um, it had good show, it, uh, good acting, good scenery. It's only 16. So that puts me at number 15. Number 15 is Lonesome Dove, the series, <clears throat> which aired from 1993 to 1994. This is a follow-up to the movies, which starred uh, uh, Ricky Schroeder as New Call. But in the in the TV ser series, it's actually Scott Bearstyle as New Call. Um, I really enjoyed this show. Um, showed Newt becoming a man and the struggle it takes to get there. And... Uh, yeah, it, it was a good follow-up to how the movies left. The mo Lonesome Dove is a great movie. but So yeah, number 15, Lonesome Dove, the series. Number 14 will actually be uh, Wagon Train, which aired from 1957 to 1965, both on ABC and NBC. It started on NBC and then went to ABC. The, the last three seasons are on ABC. The show, the show always had good stories and great actors portraying the lead roles and tons of special guest stars. I'm going to follow up on the special guest stars here in a second. <clears throat> I mean, it's a pretty simple story. You follow each week, you follow the wagon train from Missouri to California. You know? And again, this it had a ton of special guest stars. One thing I'm going to say... I like about the shows from the 60s, 70s, and a little bit in the early 80s, but mostly 60s, 70s things, was the guest stars. These shows had a ton of them. A ton of them. Go in these shows, go to Wikipedia, look them up, and look at the amount of people that 
came onto these shows, <clears throat> not just westerns, but uh, go look at like shows like Adam Twelve, Mash, uh, all those old shows. They had tons of them, and that's so cool. You can never get it now. You can never have that stuff done now because these people are just all money hungry and will charge too much money just to show their face on a TV show. Alrighty, <clears throat> so that brings us to number thirteen, which is the Rifleman. Did I miss one? No, I didn't. Sorry. Number 13. People think this probably should be higher, but number 13 is The Rifleman, which aired from 1958 to 1963. It starred Chuck Connors as Lucas McKean, who is a single father and his, and also with his son, Mark, living on a ranch trying to make a living. Uh, Lucas can be a hard-headed, stubborn man to a fault, and that is what is good as a show in the show is it shows that he has to come to grip to that at times. I mean, there's some times where he knows he's wrong, but he still, still does his hard headedness anyways. Um, but he is a good man and will stand up for what he believes, which most people today <laughs> follow the sheep and won't stand up for anything. If somebody says you should need to do this as a good thing, they automatically go and do that. Boy. Our forefathers rolled in their graves right now with the way this country is. <clears throat> but anyways, yeah, number fifteen, uh, number 13, The Rifleman, starring Chuck Connors, who was a big dude in his day. Big guy. <laughs> number 12, High Chaparral, which aired from 1967 to 1971. This is one TV show that I absolutely loved the main character. main character was Big John Cannon, played Leif, by Leif Erickson, who... Is one of my favorite old actors, my old Western actors. Um, he's another guy, big dude. Um, and, and I also like the character uh, Blue Boy, who was his son, played by Mark Slade, who did not um, participate in the last season of the show. And there was many reasons given, but I, the one everybody leans towards is a contract dispute. Even back then, you know, these studios are trying to screw over people. And, you know... Um, Blue, Blue Boy was just a young man trying to figure out life and always doing stupid things and having issues with his father. Who has had issues with their father? Um, great stories, some great um, background stories on how they got the ranch and what they had to do to keep the ranch by assisting a family across the Mexican border and <clears throat> Big John had to marry the, 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 the man's wife, I mean, uh, ma marry the man's daughter, who's like 20, 25 years younger than he is, but the reason, it, there was a reason for it, uh, you know, just to keep this ranch up and running, fighting the local Apaches, fighting nature, it was a great, a great show. Number 11, How the West Was Won which aired from 1976 to 1979. This TV show was sort of loosely based on the movie How the West Was Won, which was in my top 16 Western movies of all time. And it starred James Arness as Zeb McCann. He was awesome in this role. I love James Arness anyways. He was, he's one of those quintessential American men from that time. He was just awesome. He uh, he was, he was good. He was good. He, he knew how to play Westerns, and you'll see that later on. Um, Zeb was a scout for the U.S. Army. He was a trapper, trader, and show follows McCann's as they worked their way out to the West to resettle after having issues here in the East. Um, some, yeah, some great stories in it. Yeah, number, number 11, How the West Was Won, which brings us into my top 10. Top no, no, number ten will be Zorro, which aired from 1957 to 1959. Excuse me. I've been a true Zorro fan since I was a little kid. I love the character Zorro. The ones with uh, Antonio Banderas, they're okay, but I love Zorro. I have comics from Zorro. I have some books of Zorros. I have. I love the movies. I actually watched this one. The one that were aired from 1957 to 1959, and you've heard me mention this before on other videos, was I watched this on matinee at the Bijou. They would actually have 
like every Sunday they'd have their other stuff, and this was one of the shows that was actually built into the. It's like a two-hour show, Matinee at the Bijou, and <clears throat> I love this Zorro show. And the other Zorros that came along after that were good as well, but to me this is the best one. All right, number nine, The Lone Ranger, which uh, aired from 1949 to 1957. Uh, how many young boys and girls out there love to watch the show and play the Lone Ranger themselves? I had the whole hat, the mask, and the gun belt as a kid, and it will always be in my heart. I, oh, I love this show. I can remember watching this as a kid and just wishing I was him. <clears throat> many people think that the Lone Ranger was only played by uh, one person, which was Clayton Moore, but he actually only starred in 168 uh, episodes out of the, what is it, uh, 212? He starred in 168 of them, and John Hart starred in the other 52 um, episodes. And it was all due to a contract dispute between Moore and the studio. Clayton Moore came back and finished the ep uh, series, but uh, uh, John Hart played the middle part after Clayton Clayton Moore left. He played in the middle, then uh, Clayton came back and finished it. Uh, Jay Silverheels played Tonto throughout the series. Uh, Jay Silverheels actually um, came here to Ludlow, Vermont. We have a ski resort in this town called Okemo Mountain Resort. It's one of the biggest resorts east of the Mississippi. And he was actually here in the... He actually came here a lot in the 50s, 60s, and early 70s. You know, people got pictures of him in, you know, in the stores that uh, he visited. Uh, the mountain still has uh, pictures of him. Uh, and then again, I don't know. Um, the old owners did. Now we are, now the resort's owned by Vale, which has totally screwed this area up big time. Um, but yeah, um, he played uh, uh, Tonto throughout the series. Uh, the movie from 2015 for the, uh, for the Lone Ranger starring Army Hammer and Johnny uh, Johnny Depp is an absolute pile of dog poop. Crap movie. Crap movie. Uh, but the movie from 1981 called The Legend of the Lone Ranger is actually a pretty decent film. Uh, yeah. So, number nine, Lone Ranger. Number eight is F Troop. F Troop aired from 1965 to 1967. It was more of a comedy, but it is a Western. And some of the stuff was absolutely hilarious. And still to this day, I, I watch that show and I laugh. But with the cancel culture we have now, the, the stuff, they, they, they wouldn't fly. <laughs> In this show, you have Forrest Tucker, who played uh, the tough guy uh, uh, Sergeant O'Rourke. Uh, who is a cal is who was in who is a sergeant in the cavalry, and is just an outright schemer, always trying to come up with ways to make money. And then you have Larry Storch, who plays, uh, oh God, Corporal. Ah oh man, I'm having brain cramp. Ah, I'll I'll mention it hopefully later. I'm having a brain cramp, but he plays his side uh, <coughs> sergeant or sidekick, and how they try to wheel deal with the local Indian local Indians. And get over on the commanding officer, uh, Captain Param uh, Par Parminer, played by Ken Berry, who actually went on to star in Mayberry RFD and a bunch of other shows. But I love this show. It was funny. Again, guest stars up the butt when they would you know, do different uh, series. The way he was always trying to make money and get over on the Army. Anybody that's in the military has always tried to get over on your prospective branch of the military. I don't care if you're Army, Navy, Air Force, or the Marines. You're always trying to get over on the, the leadership, somehow, some way. So, F Troop. That was a good one. Number seven. Wild Wild West, which aired from 1965 to 1969, which was a Western mixed with sci-fi. And also, this is probably one of the first shows you can actually say might have started, people look back on and started the steampunk Steampunk Grace. Um, it starred Robert Conrad as Agent James West. Robert Conrad is awesome. He's a man's man. He, he was just awesome. And you have Ross Martin as Agent Artemis Gordon. Uh, this show was just plain fun. And it had me when I started. It had it had me uh, when I started watching the reruns in, in school. You know, I was probably elementary school when this started, when I started watching reruns. 
the special effects for the show for for being filmed in the 60s was really good uh, this was like an espionage a western espionage sci-fi show mixed with alternate reality type style uh, and artists always came up with some great gadgets for uh, uh, James West to have to help fight the bad guys. And they had some great bad guys in the show. Some great ones. This was just a good show. The movie with uh, uh, Will Smith, it was all right. They definitely pushed the steampunk in that movie, though. But the movie was okay, but it'll never come even close to the TV series. So number seven was Wild Wild West. Number six. Love this show. Number six, Kung Fu, which aired from 1972 to 1975. As a kid, I was already into uh, martial arts uh, movies and TV shows. Um, Love Bruce Lee, all those guys. So I was naturally drawn to this show. Starring David Carradine as uh, Kwai Chang Kwai Chang Kane, he was awesome in the role. He really was different kind of dude in real life, but he was he was awesome in the role. So much so much so that I had to have the I had the lunchbox and I had the, some of the toys from the the TV series. I God, I wish I still had all my lunchboxes that I had. Some of those things are worth some bucks now. Um, the acting was okay, but it was always the action that got me to it got me to this TV show, and kept come, having me coming back. Yeah, number six, Kung Fu. Number five, Gunsmoke, which aired from 1955 to 1975. Straight starred James Arness as Matt Dillon, the U.S. Marshal for Dodge City, and to this day is still one of the longest running television series in history. I mean, where do I start? The show was great. The first ten seasons are the best, uh, but even after that, it's still good, a good TV show. The amount of guest stars again that has showed up in this was—I mean, you had uh, I mean, Burt Reynolds actually ended up playing a, a lead role, not a lead role, but he was a secondary role in this movie, uh, this TV show for quite a while. Um, it, it, it just, but it shows how popular this show was with the amount of guest stars it had. Supporting cast was superb. The setting and the acting and the stories were all excellent. Again, James Arness, he was awesome. Awesome. That brings me to number four. Number four, The Big Valley, which aired from 1965 to 1969. This was a great show, and I watched it on reruns in the late 70s and 80s, and I'm watching reruns right now. It's on, uh, what is it, CW? Has it? I think it's CW. And I love the show. Love it. Barbara Stanwyck played Victoria Barkley, one of the first strong female roles going all the way back to the 1960s. Uh, she played Victoria Barkley, who was the matriarch of the ranch and just tried to keep the family and the, sa- and the ranch safe. Um, she, her sons, Jared Barkley, or actually this is where I got my son's name, Jared, is from this TV show. Um, Nick, uh, the other son, Nick, Barkley, and then Heath Barkley was played by Lee Majors, who went on to Six Million Dollar Man and many, 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 many more things. Uh, the daughter Audra was played by Linda Evans. The show fa- focused on the Barkley family, and it's actually based on tr- loosely based on a real family in California with a real ranch. Uh, they're never they did never ending fight against weather, cattle thieves, villains nature and life in general but i love this show loved it from the beginning and still love it to this day so this brings us into our top three number three people are going to be like what well number three deadwood which aired from 2004 to 2006 this tv show is a very modern take on the western it took place in deadwood south dakota during the gold rush uh, Gold Rush years. It was on TV only for three years, and it was on HBO. And it is a truly raunchy, violent, funny show. Uh, great had a great ongoing story. Great actors, great acting, awesome sets. Ian McShane as Al Swearingen was great. He's awesome. And then you had Timothy Oliphant playing Seth Bullock. 
who was awesome. All the supporting actors and actresses in the show was great. Uh, I mean, both Bullock and Swergen are opposite of each other in this show. But they actually, I mean, Swergen being the ruthless bar owner and business owner and Bullock being a sheriff store owner. They're completely opposite on a lot of things, but in real actuality, they are quite similar in very many ways. If you've never watched Deadwood, watch it. It's still available on HBO. You can actually get the Blu-rays, DVDs, 4Ks, whatever you want to watch it on. Watch it. If you do not like swearing, you're not going to like it. If you don't like nudity, you're not going to like it. If you're gonna, you don't like violence... You're not going to like it. But it's so good. It's so good. It ended on a kind of a bummer, but they actually came back just last year. Remember, this the last show was in 2006. They just came back last year and did Deadwood the movie to finish it up. And they did a great job with the movie. So yeah, number three, Deadwood from, 19, uh, from 2004 to 2006. Number two, Little House on the Prairie, which aired from 1974 to 1983. This show will always have a spot in my heart. I don't care when, where, what. I love this show. I loved the show growing up. Um, Charles Ingalls, played by Mike Landon, was phenomenal. And he will always go down as one of my top uh, father figures in TV and movie history. Um, it was just awesome. Great episodes, great family stories. Just a plain great TV show. Great TV show. It could, it, it, this can go actually in one of my, probably, it would go in my, if I was to do like a top 50, it would easily go in my top 50 TV shows of all time. Easily. It would probably be in the top 25. I might have to do that sometime. But yeah, number two, Little House on the Prairie. And this brings me to number one, which to me is the best Western show, TV show of all time, and easily one of the best TV shows, plain and simple, of all time. Number one, Bonanza which aired from 1959 to 1973. But what can I say? This show will always be my favorite Western TV show of all time, no matter what. And I, unless something comes along that can beat out those other 15 below it and knock off number one, it, it better be, it's going to have to be one hell of a show. I love Ben Wright, who was played by Lauren Green as the father. He goes in down as one of my top father figures of all time as well. Um... He also started one of my favorite sci-fi TV shows of all time, and that's the original Battlestar Galactica. Haas, one of the sons, played by Dan Blocker. Little Joe, played by Michael Landon, who was just in Little House on the Prairie. Um, and, and Adam Cartwright, played by Pernell, Pernell Roberts, who have all passed away, sadly. Uh, all of our great actors and actresses are gone. It sucks because a lot of these new people just are no, never hold the never fill the boots of these old old actors and actresses. I just love the whole family dynamics of the show. Great episodes, great scenery, so many actor uh, guest starred on this show. Watch this, look it up on Wikipedia, look up the guest actors, guest stars. You, you, that's one thing I, I keep going back to this: the amount of guest stars that used to sh uh, show up on all these old shows. It's mind boggling, mind boggling. But yeah, so that's my top 16 Westerns of all time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave some comments. Please like the video if you like it. Share it. And subscribe. So, again, I will see you guys back here on Sunday for my movie TV talk. Um, I'll have my son here. We'll be talking Godzilla vs. Kong. And, oh, it's Sunday's Easter. I, so I won't see you prior probably to Easter dinner. So have a happy Easter if you celebrate that. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a great day, guys. Take, take care of yourselves. Take it easy.